What is scientism? Does science talk about everything? Is science universal? My name is Rodrigo Gim, anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. Science. Many people talk about science like this, in the singular, as if it were universal. This idea that science is universal is fundamentally linked to Eurocentrism, linked to the notion that science would have a single origin. And this ignores that in the history of sciences, there were contributions from different cultures to what came to be called later scientific knowledge. In addition, this univocal history of science ignores the role of colonialism, which was fundamental in generating wealth and materials in addition to the necessary knowledges which came to be called science. Discourses on scientific evolution as a development of knowledge or as an accumulation of knowledge, fail to explain the ways in which discourses, practices, and scientific objects were formed. Because they ignore precisely the multiplicity of cultures that contributed, either through exchange or domination, with what later came to be discussed as science. Science wasn't formed only by itself, by its own internal strength. Science is always done within a larger discursive field of knowledge, of the regimes of truth, and of the power and institutional relations that form it, as Michel Foucault taught us. And of course, there is no science without the recognition of a subject of knowledge, the scientist as a producer of evidences and theories. Many scientists say that science is a specific experience like no other, and in part, they are right. And many are quick to say that science and religion are different when it favors their, their arguments for science and against religion, for example. But many are also quick to say that science can provide the answers that religion supposedly seeks. Scientism is precisely that discourse and practice of science as the privileged and sacred space of knowledge. Scientism does not recognize that what it calls science is the articulation of knowledges and power relations that are taken as universal and neutral. Science can only claim to be universal and neutral because of those regimes of truth and power relations that make this possible and even for some desirable. That is to say, scientism as this placement of scientific knowledge and practices as universal and sac sacrosanct is produced within a certain regime of pre-scientific truth. The belief in universal reason that can and should even for some govern the world predates modern science as we know it. We cannot defend science as universal without thereby reproducing relations of domination and colonialism. We cannot say that science is universal without reproducing Eurocentrism and Western centrism. Scientific discourses and practices do not live in a power vacuum. On the contrary, they are fundamental in the reproduction of the dominant knowledges and the dominant ways of life. Conducting an analysis of the effects of sciences on our ways of life is to understand that all sciences are produced in specific historical, social and cultural contexts which produce and reproduce dominant ways of life and subjugated ways of life. The dimension of knowledge that makes it possible to recognize something as scientific is a dimension without which the seal of science is not placed. 
in order to understand how something can be called scientific, we need to understand the dimension of knowledge of those regimes of truth that make such a seal possible. As Michel Foucault says, citation, to bring into existence the dimension of knowledge as a specific dimension is not to reject the various analyses of science. It is to unfold as broadly as possible the space in which they can come to rest. End of citation. Scientists say they never get the full truth, and they say that this is part of the scientist's humility, of the humility of science. But this same incompleteness is critiqued in other spheres, such as religion, philosophy, and the arts, by many scientists. The incompleteness that science permits itself, the notion that total knowledge never arrives, the so-called scientific attitude that allows itself to speak about objects even though it knows only one possible approximation to these, all of which scientism does not allow to other worldviews that are not considered scientific. For scientism, if there's a last word about any natural or human event, that last word is science. Scientism is the belief of science as the final word. In this sense, scientism operates within a will to truth that is one with those dogmatic religions that scientism critiques so much. Today's scientism operates on a rationality that has not evolved scientifically too much. It's a rationality that was stagnated in the 18th century, when it was believed that the world was rational and that reason would restore the order of the world and the place of the subject in that world. This worldview, this knowledge, is based on the idea that everything that happens has a unique originating cause and that the innate gift of the human being would be the use of reason. But as Nietzsche said, citation, we have no organ at all for knowledge, for truth. We know or believe or imagine precisely as much as may be useful in the interest of the human herd, the species. And even what it is here called usefulness is in the end only a belief, something imagined, and perhaps precisely that most fatal piece of stupidity by which we shall one day perish. End of citation. Many scientists promise to solve universal problems. Some, like Sam Harris, have even proposed that science will one day show us what universal good and what universal evil are. And it's interesting how they are called to talk about it without presenting the results that would prove that morality is universal. Just saying that it's possible for science to do this and to be heard without presenting any minimally legitimate research results already demonstrates that there is a field of the regimes of truth and knowledge that expects and wants the world to prove itself knowable. The dream of scientism is that the world is a rational open book waiting to be read and comforting the subjects about the fact that the world is knowable. The subject of scientism wants the same kind of comfort as the religious fundamentalist in this comfort that dogmatic scientists and religious dogmatics share, the world has meaning and the meaning of the subject is to carry the burden of unraveling the meaning. This is a subject who prefers to believe lies than not to believe anything. Scientism is not satisfied with knowledge. Scientism wants to shape the world in its image. Perhaps the greatest use of scientism is an event that doesn't come by its conscious will. Perhaps we are in need of scientism precisely so that it can be taken to its extreme and there at its extreme, it's possible 
to raise the question of universal reason, of truth and its violences. As in many sciences, and here I speak of sciences in the plural because it's not, there is no universal science, it may be necessary to take scientism to the extreme so that in the extreme it explodes or becomes something new. Then perhaps we, we will let scientism proclaim to the four corners of the world that they will tell us what is good and what is evil in the universal. And when they reach that, maybe they will see that their audience will be made up of those same dogmatic and religious fundamentalists that they both say they despise. And maybe this thought of mine is just a crazy desire that doesn't fit in any science. Perhaps these gurus who claim to be experts in cultural and moral issues appear as what they really are, reproducers of dominant wills of truth and operators of dominant wills of to power. The critique of scientism is not a critique of science in general that doesn't even exist. It's a critique of those who make science a dogma because they, in doing so, they are producing fundamentalisms. Scientific negationism or denialism is one of those fundamentalisms produced in reactivity to scientism. Scientism is an accomplice in this rampant production of denialists, as well as religious fundamentalisms. When science wants to take on the task of creating and judging all values, it necessarily produces resistances that reproduce other spaces that want the same, that want to dictate the values of a culture or a society. Even when they say they don't want to dictate values, that's what they do in practice when they place values as, as universal, because in practice, this is what is done when they call for something to be a universal. So we cannot agree with certain scientists like Sam Harris or Steven Pinker when they say that their, their scientism is very different from the religious fundamentalisms that they say they fight against. And here we go with Nietzsche. Science has no consideration for ultimate purposes any more than nature has, but just as the latter occasionally achieves things of the greatest suitableness without intending to do so, so also true science, as the imitator of nature in ideas, will occasionally and in many ways further the usefulness and welfare of man, but also without intending to do so. End of citation. There is a discourse about scientism as the same as talking about scientific rigor and valorization of science. But valuing the sciences must, must not come with the belief that science is neutral knowledge or that it's necessarily better than other forms of knowledge. Valuing the sciences means being able to understand that they can also be the object of study and critique, even more when they intend to be self-governed, totally self-conscious. The effects of all sciences are always multiple and contradictory. Scientism that becomes dogmatism reproduces negations and fundamentalisms of various orders. Well, people, that's all for today. I hope you liked it. If you want to help this channel to grow more, please become a supporter on Patreon. And if, you like, if you'd like to have courses with me, they're also available there. Thank you all. See you next time.